Hey, welcome back everyone. This is Bill. I'm an expat and I'm living in the Philippines. In the same seal, I always say, if you don't know by now, I'm a prepper. So today's video, I want to talk about a question I get asked surprisingly quite a lot um, regarding the purchase of my Harvest Right freeze dryer. Now, about a year ago, I paid up front approximately 3,500 uh, US dollars for a Harvest Right large uh, UE version, uh, which is a 220, 240, 60, 50 hertz uh, large. Uh, with an extra set of trays and um, the premier pump. So it took about four or five months for them to actually build that uh, freeze dryer. And then uh, the shipping to get it shipped out here was a little over a thousand US um, as well because they shipped uh, FedEx air cargo, which was fine. You know, I, once it was, you know, I was waiting for it for four months. So once it was uh, ready, uh, I'm glad I didn't have to wait three months while it was shipped on a boat. So I'll be honest with you, I, I paid the cost. So that put me right around, you know, 4,500 give or take um, that I sent to Harvest Right. Now, uh, when it did arrive here, I had to spend about 800 US for customs, right? So importation fees, customs considered it a luxury good. Um, we can argue whether it's a kitchen device, like an oven or not, but either way, it was another additional 800 to get it delivered or, or to clear customs and get it delivered. So the questions I get asked a lot was, how did I get it here? And it's really quite simple. I went on the Harvest Right um, website and they had a little icon that said for international sales, click here. I clicked there. I got in contact with a guy named Jared. Um, we sorted things out. I made the payment. And then it was a waiting game until it got here. It really wasn't that complicated at all getting it here other than the money. And the time it took for them to um, actually assemble it at the factory, right? So I guess they didn't have any laying around or sticking around. So how do you get one here? It's really that simple. You go online, you tell them you want the 220 volt version, you pay cash, and they ship it out to you. So it's a pretty straightforward process, right? So. The next question I get asked all the time is, was it worth it? And uh, I'm gonna say it was extremely worth it. If I had extra budget, I would probably buy their new extra large machine um, just so I can go into making more food. Uh, I'd probably start making food for resale, specifically um, the freeze dried fruit, the mango and, and things like that. So yes, straight to the point, it was completely worth it. I'm absolutely happy I bought the Harvest Right freeze dryer. I'm glad I got the large. Um, if they had an extra large at that time, I would have bought the extra large. I've had zero problems with the freeze dryer. It just runs and runs and runs. I've changed the oil um, every 25 batches. I put probably 60 batches through it in the uh, five months I've had it up and running. I don't have anything running currently just because I haven't figured out what I want to run next. But uh, how much food can I make? Well, let me tell you. I'm gonna put some figures up here, or here, or wherever it turns out on the screen, and I'm gonna talk about how much food I've made in five months. How much freeze-dried protein, vegetables, and fruits, and other things that I now have in my long-term storage. This is stuff that's guaranteed five to 10 to 15 years, depending on what I made. You know, I started off with the basic stuff, raw, scrambled eggs and uh, you'll see how many I did here and then I did stuff like various pastas I did mac and cheese I did chili mac and cheese I did tuna alfredo I did uh, Italian spaghetti I did chicken fettuccine uh, chicken alfredo um, a lot of pasta dishes I ran through real quick because that's a good hearty meal and the pasta dishes last a long time so I have a lot of pasta stuff um, Hopefully I'm showing you the, the amounts I have in storage here, here, and here, you know. But that was the pastas. Then I did two large batches of oatmeal with fruit. Then I did an oatmeal savory, and that was with corn, onions, and chicken. I call it gruel, but it came out really good. If you're in the Philippines, it will remind you of lugao. You know, it's a porridge, right? Just like the Japanese eat a rice porridge. Um, same here in the Philippines. This is a oatmeal based porridge. It's really good. Um, I did some chocolate puddings. 
the champurado, the Philippine stuff. My wife loves that. I'm actually going to have to have, make some more of that because she eats that pretty regular when she's craving some chocolate. I did regular puddings, you know, Jello brand puddings. They came out okay, but I've done them. I know how to do it again. I've done ice cream. I've done bananas. Bananas, I might or might not do again. Mangoes are still my favorite, which I've done a lot of mango. Uh, I've done uh, yogurts. Yogurts came out pretty good too. I like that. Vegetable-wise, I've done bell peppers. Uh, I've done okra many times. Corn, sweet corn kernels. I've done uh, avocado guacamole mix, which is great to have on stock. I got cook squash. I got raw squash. I have carrots now. Um, green beans. I did a whole bunch of green beans as well. I've, I've done, I don't know how many rotisserie chickens. It'll be somewhere here, but I've done cooked rotisserie chicken that comes back great. It rehydrates beautiful. I've, uh, I, I've just done so much food. Maybe if I forgot to mention something, it'll be here or here. I've done uh, Parmesan cheese, for example. That came out really great. I'm just making and stacking. I, I've done 20 kilos of cooked cube pork, right? So I'm getting my protein stuff. That's really good for cooking. Uh, I mean, I'm happy I did that. I did some mashed potatoes with butter and milk, really creamy with a little pepper. It came out really good as well. So the amount of food I've been able to do in the five months, um, I'll try to have a total maybe uh, here. I don't know how many calories it equates to, I just know how many servings and I know how much of it's protein, veg, and carbs, right? So I have a lot of food that I made myself feel very proud about it. I'm going to continue to keep making food. Um, the Harvest Right is the best expense I, I made last year and by far it's the sanest thing I did when it comes to food preps. I do have a lot of other food preps. Go check out my pantry video, right? So I'm not all dehydrated food. I got a lot of canned protein, a lot of canned protein and a whole bunch of other things. And yes, I do have a lot of water. That's a whole nother topic. You can check out my video on my well. So would I buy a Harvest Right again? Absolutely. If you have a homestead, a farm, or access to a lot of uh, fresh vegetables and fruits at a decent price, it is absolutely a good investment. When it comes to long-term food storage, there's no better solution out there right now than freeze-dried food. Dehydrated food is great. It just has a limited shelf. Canning is good too, but here in the Philippines, there's not a lot of people that can. And I didn't want to mess with the ball jars and pressure cookers and all of that. I just went straight to the freeze dry. Um, I'm very happy that I did that. So yes, this short video today is just how I got my freeze dryer here. How much food are you realistically able to make in a five month period, which is what this video hopefully showed you guys. And then also, would I do it again? And absolutely yes. Absolutely I would buy a Harvest Right freeze dryer again. Now I've seen other freeze dryers come on the market, but you know, you go with what works. I've got mine, it works. And the great thing is, is there's a large freeze drying community out there, so you can get ideas, you can get tips, you can figure out what's going on by watching their channels. So you're not alone in trying to figure out this expense. I know for a lot of people, spending, you know, almost $6,000, more if you add up the things I bought to go with it, all the trays and all the extra stuff, is a very big expense. And uh, I sacrificed, saved, and I bought it. But I'm telling you guys, if you have the money and the means, get a freeze dryer. You're going to be able to stack long-term food that you know what's in it, that you cooked, that's just as fresh as the day that came off the ground. Because you, you buy it that morning, you clean it, process it, and get it freezing. And when you rehydrate it, it comes back absolutely perfect. Quick video, I know. I just wanted to get one out to you guys. I get asked this question all the time. And uh, I got a lot of stuff coming up. I haven't even started with the candies yet just because I'm just stacking the proteins, the vegetables, and the carbs. Um, eventually, I'll get around to stacking uh, candy for sale and for snacks. If you guys have any comments or thoughts about what you'd like to see me to try to freeze dry, there's some Philippine recipes I want to get at. You know, I want to get at some uh, traditional Philippine stuff. 
and I want to make some stews and some other things. So I'm going to get there. I just uh, if you if you have something you want me to try to freeze dry, let me know. Drop it down in the comments, and uh, if it lines up right with the market and everything, I'll go ahead and make an effort to get that freeze dried and get it uh, a video done so you guys can see what I'm doing. With that, if you watched all the way to the end, please hit that like button. Please share this video if you know anybody that's hesitant or thinking about getting a freeze dryer, maybe it will help them. Um, I have a lot of freeze dry content in, on my YouTube. Go check that out. If you're into freeze drying or if you're thinking about it, see what I'm doing. Um, subscribe to my channel, hit that notification button so you know when I freeze dry something next. And on that note, thank you for watching all the way to the end. Be safe.